Another bad performance from a Braves starting pitcher leads to an ugly loss, but Spencer Strider shines once again, proving maybe he deserves a shot in the rotation, and Matt Olson and Marcelo Zuna continue to carry the offense atop the lineup while the bottom of the lineup needs to pick it up. We'll break all that down on today's episode of Locked On Braves, so let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams every day. I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there to see everywhere I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at TomahawkTake.com. Also, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at LockedOn underscore Braves. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And as always, thank you for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. Today we're going to talk about the Braves' 11-2 loss to the Nationals, looking at the performance from Waskari Noah. Also, Spencer Strider, could he get a shot in the rotation? Matt Olson keeps getting on base. Marcelo Zuna keeps hitting the ball hard. And what are the Braves going to do with the starting rotation going forward? Well, let's dive into Monday's game. Another rough one for a starting pitcher. Waskari Noah lasts just three innings, gives up seven hits, two walks, five earned runs, and four strikeouts. And really just struggled out of the gate. Had a 26-pitch first inning which he got out of, but I think that really set him up for the second time through the lineup. Again, with just that fastball slider combination, batters able to adjust to him rather quickly. And it was the second day in a row that a Braves that the Braves gave up five runs in the third inning, so that's becoming a troubling inning for them early on. And, you know, this has been the issue with Anoa for a while. I talked about it a lot in the offseason. I know he had a great stretch of starts last year, and he deserves a shot to be in the rotation to prove that that stretch he had last year wasn't an aberration. But being primarily fastball slider, when you give good hitters a 50% chance of knowing what's coming, as good as your pitches may be, they are eventually going to adjust to that. And he wasn't very sharp in that first inning. Uh, Had some bad calls from Angel Hernandez behind the plate that didn't help either. But altogether, just not a great outing from Waskar. Enoa, and again, a second straight start where a Braves starter struggles early. We're going to talk about the rotation a little bit more later on in the podcast and where Brian Snicker could go from there. It's also a rough day at the plate for Austin Riley. Uh, he had a great series against the Reds, but it was a rough night for him and struck out three times in four at-bats only after, after only striking out once in the four-game series with the Reds. They really started pounding him in, and I'm wondering if that exposes a a new hole for Austin Riley that pitchers may exploit. So that'll be something to keep an eye on if Austin Riley can adjust to that or not. But on the bright side, Matt Olson and Marcelo Zuna keep getting on base. Matt Olson with a couple more walks. Marcelo Zuna with three more hard hit balls, 95 miles per hour or harder. Two of those going for hits. Olson this time beat out of play at the plate, scoring a run in the ninth inning. So that was a little bit of fun and a blowout game. Olsen also had the hardest hit ball of the game for the Braves on a ground out that left the bat at 109.8 miles per hour. So those two in the lineup, an off night for Riley. Otherwise, the top of the lineup has been very good, but time for the bottom of the order and the rest of the guys in this lineup to start stepping up. Talked about Spencer Strider. He's been impressive early on. He might be deserving of a shot in the rotation, we'll discuss where Snicker goes with his starters next. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting sports stats and info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs in the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action Bet online where the game starts. So, again, a, a rough start from Waskari Noah, and I think he deserves another chance. I don't think the Braves are going to pull him, but his leash in the starting rotation for me 
is a little short at this point. And he has not been very good since coming back from the injury in ERA over six since his first start after coming back from that injury. So after a long uh, run of success last year, he's now had a long run of not having success. So I would say his leash is pretty short at this point. Max, Charlie, Ian, and Kyle are locks for the starting rotation right now. Ian Anderson is not coming out after one bad start. He's had too much success for the Braves already. He will get it figured out. So I think four spots are pretty much locked up right now. You know, if Kyle starts to falter, obviously that spot comes up. But after what he did in his first outing, I got to think that bites him at least uh, three or four more times in the rotation. So the fifth spot is up for grabs. And, you know, right now, Ryan Snicker's still deciding to go with a six-man rotation. So technically, you could say two spots are up for grabs. But obviously, when you get into the season, most likely just be a five-man rotation. So that fifth spot still remains up for grabs at this point. With those four at the top, I believe, solidifying their spots in the rotation. So let's look at a couple of options here, and let's start with Spencer Strider. Three and a third innings pitch on Monday. Three hits, three walks, one earned, three Ks. Not as dominant, but still pretty effective. You know, only giving up the one earned run in three and a third innings. Through, th through 71 pitches, so getting him stretched out. If the Braves do decide to move him to the rotation, give him a shot there. In his two games this season, he's pitched five and a third innings, three hits, three walks, one earned, and eight strikeouts. So, again, small sample size, but he's been largely effective this year. Does he deserve a, a fifth spot in the rotation? Look, I've been of the belief I think he needs to go back to AAA, work on his secondary pitches, and then come back up. But he's looked mighty impressive, and I would not necessarily be mad at it. I just wonder what that does for his development if they move him to the rotation and he really starts to struggle then what do you do with him moving back down at that point i guess i kind of would rather him go ahead and move back down work on those pitches come back up and be ready to go when it's his call and can he keep pitchers off balance with those two pitches i just talked about it with wascari noah who's primarily fastball slider it's the same for spencer strider and they both throw really hard i mean wascar can throw 97, 98, you know, Strider throws 100, but can he be effective over five innings with those two pitches? Major League hitters are going to catch up with 100 miles per hour and you give them a enough time to look at it. So, again, I think he gets a chance. It just seems like that's where the Braves are going, you know, giving him that lengthy outing on Monday. I feel like he's going to get a shot at some point. I just don't know if it's now. Or if they do, send him back down and let him get ready to come back up later. I don't understand. I don't understand what the plan is with Tucker Davidson. I was really kind of upset, still am, that he brought Brian Sicker brought Tucker Davidson into this game, especially with what we know now. And I don't know why. Why is he not getting a chance in the rotation? I know he didn't necessarily look great on Monday, but that's coming out of the bullpen. Completely different set of circumstances. I really wanted to see Tucker get a shot in the rotation. I don't know what the decision-making was to bring him in to that game. You, you're telling me that Darren O'Day couldn't have given you an inning, Tyler Thornburg couldn't have given, him, given you an inning. I, I don't understand why he he pulled or put Tucker Davidson in that situation and didn't just leave him ready to start on Tuesday. That made absolutely no sense to me. Now you're probably going to have to send him down, and you won't be able to get him a chance till later in the season because the player has to stay down for 10 days. So I don't know what they're doing with Tucker Davidson at the moment. Uh, really perplexing to me when I saw him coming out of the bullpen on Monday night. Just really shocked, surprised, um, and honestly just a little upset. Uh, Kyle Muller, he's already had two starts at AAA. Nine and two-thirds innings, eight hits, two walks, three earned, 13 Ks. Um, you know, he could, he could get a shot soon, but he just pitched, so he's not going to get the start on – Tuesday, but next time through the rotation, Kyle Muller certainly could be a candidate. Tuki Toussaint seemed like the perfect candidate to come out and start on Tuesday. He's made one outing in AAA. He'd be on five days rest for Tuesday. He struck out eight but walked four and lasted just four and two-thirds innings, kind of a typical Tuki start where he can strike out everybody and then he can also walk everybody. But guys on the 40-man roster who were, uh, were all technically optioned at the end of spring training, they can't be called up until the middle 
uh, or till April 17th. So Tukey is not an option there. And maybe the most likely candidate right now is Bryce Elder. He was scheduled to make his first AAA start on Tuesday, so it was already his spot in the rotation. But he does require a spot on the 40-man roster. So you're going to have to cut somebody from this 40-man roster. I mean, there's there's some candidates on there. Sean Newcomb, Travis Demerit, I think, could be getting axed on Tuesday. So I think Bryce Elder makes a lot of sense. He certainly looked good in spring training. And I think he would do just fine, but you have to find room on the 40-man roster for him. Going forward, again, with a five-man rotation, I, I don't know who's going to win that fifth spot at this point. Uh, Bryce Elder comes up and pitches like he has all through the minor leagues and how he did in spring training. I think he has an opportunity to grab it. I think Tukey gets a look. Kyle as well. Again, Waskar's going to get another start. I'm not completely dismissing him, but I do think that job is up for grabs here going forward those are your most likely candidates at the moment after a back-to-back -back ugly losses with some poor starting pitching look for the braves to bounce back on tuesday and i'll tell you how they do that next with the ever-increasing number of makes and models it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at your home in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselvers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything you could need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliable low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. On Tuesday, it'll be Patrick Corbin going up against somebody we don't know at the time of recording for the Atlanta Braves. Again, I think it's starting to look like it could be Bryce Elder going in that game. Um, which would be exciting. I hope it is. I still don't understand why you didn't just save Tucker Davidson to start this game, and now you have to cut somebody off the 40-man roster. But um, I do think it's going to be Rice Elder at this point. There really aren't that many other options at the moment. But as far as going up against Patrick Corbin, I think it's a really good chance for some of the guys in the Braves lineup that hit lefties really well to step up. Ozzie Albies in particular, who is 10 for 25 with three home runs off Corbin. Orlando Arce is 4 for 10 with a homer against him. Duvall 9 for 30 with two home runs and four doubles off Corbin. And then Matt Olson, a lefty himself, is 2 for 2 with a double off Patrick Corbin. So those are some guys that you want to pick to click in this game. I think could have a lot of success. But mostly, just need to see this offense string some good at-bats together Again, especially the bottom of the order, um, which Ozzy will be hitting at the top. But it would be good to see him get going, see Eddie Rosario get going, which he may get a day off against a lefty uh, after facing another one on Monday. But Arcia, obviously, that's what he's in there for, to hit those lefties. It would be great to see him get going. Nansby Swanson. It's really the other guys outside of the, the middle three in Olsen, Riley, and Ozuna that really have to get going for this offense to start clicking. And I know not all of them are going to be hitting at the same time, but there's got to be there's got to be more disparity throughout the lineup. You can't just have your three guys in the middle getting on base all the time and nobody else outside of them to drive them in or get on base for them to be driven in. So that's the key I'm looking for on Tuesday. I think those guys will be able to pick up the slack in the offense while the others continue to mash. And I think this offense will put up some decent amount of runs. Who knows what we're going to get from the pitching side of things, but hopefully it's much better than what we've seen in these past two games. That will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Appreciate you sticking with me through this one as I'm obviously a little bit under the weather, but wanted to get my thoughts out there from Monday's game and my thoughts on the pitching situation going forward. So make sure to follow us on Twitter at LockedOn underscore Braves. You can follow me at ShortstopBall. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we'll talk to you next time.